morning, everybody. How's everybody doing? Good. All right. Well, welcome to Evolve 2016. We're all sure glad to have you here. Hope you all enjoyed the opening session. It was a really nice stage set up in there and had a lot of cool energy. So uh, to follow that up, we've got Brent Schooley here, and his presentation is entitled Contextual Communication in a Connected World. And he's going to, I saw a preview of it yesterday, and it was pretty exciting stuff. So without any further ado, Brent Schooley. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I uh, hope everyone's still super excited from the keynote. I will try not to bring the energy down in the room. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Brent Schooley. I am a developer evangelist at a company called Twilio. Uh, and Twilio is a sponsor of Evolve 2016. And if you haven't stopped by our booth, uh, I would love to see you stop by at some point. Uh, we are a developer platform for, should surprise no one, communications. Uh, we make it super simple for you guys uh, to, as developers, to uh, connect people, uh, both to your apps and to each other. Uh, and we do that with a variety of different technologies. We have uh, standard telephony things like uh, programmable SMS, MMS, and voice. So you can build all kinds of really cool things with a phone number. Uh, and then we have really exciting IP products. And they're really exciting for this crowd because they work in Xamarin. Uh, we have voice over IP with a product that we call Twilio Client. Uh, that's available in the component store. Uh, the mini hack that you can check out here uh, today is using our IP messaging product, which is chat. Uh, and we have, coming really soon, I can actually get you the bindings for it if you want, peer-to-peer uh, -peer video solution. So peer-to-peer -peer video communication, uh, and that works on iOS, Android, and JavaScript. Uh, so does the chat and the voice over IP. So that's what Twilio is, uh, and super excited to talk about communication and how you can use those tools uh, to enhance Contextual communication in a connected world. Uh, I think to set the stage for what we're going to talk about, this is basically uh, going to improve how businesses talk to people and how we talk to businesses. So to set the stage, uh, tech evolves, pardon the pun, uh, at a rapid pace. For instance, our computers, they're getting faster and smaller all the time. That MacBook packs pretty good power into a compact two pound, 12 inch frame. Retina display, full size keyboard, it's magical, it's revolutionary, and we think you're gonna love it. Uh, I'm not from Apple. Uh, and then the Surface Book, which is uh, taking, Surface Book and Surface Pro, honestly, uh, taking that same compact form factor, but adding uh, the capability of touch and pen to really increase the experience we have with these devices. And they're really, really easy to put in a bag and travel with because they're small and they're light. Our portable devices are getting smarter and they're also getting faster. Uh, I don't say they're getting smaller because really they're not. <laughs> the trend seems to be to make these phones bigger and bigger. And uh, that's okay. But the power that comes from these devices, the, the personal assistant capabilities that these have with Siri and Cortana and OK Google, you can really have a conversation with your phone to accomplish tasks that would be tedious by typing. It's really cool. And these are computers that are just in our pocket all the time. You can pull it out at any time. It's often the best camera. It's the computer you always have with you. As app developers and as companies, we can ship amazing products at a truly global scale in a time frame that is just unlike what we could ever do in the past. We've got these great stores uh, that if you've got a business idea, you can make it happen and you can get it into people's hands uh, really quickly. And that's amazing. And yet, in 2016, every single time I need to deal with a bank or an airline or any variety of other company that might sh sell you a product and you can't get the job done in the app or on the website, 1-800-1-866-1855, whatever the toll-free numbers are right now, and you gotta do one of these. Press one for this. Enter that account number that you just punched into the website. Enter it again when it gets transferred to another person. It's terrible. This is really, I think, a shame for 2016. Because it turns out we still haven't figured out modern business communication. We haven't figured out how to talk to humans uh, with our business. And that's what I want to talk about today, is how we can, as software developers, it is incumbent upon us to change this, right? And we can change this. And I'm going to talk to you about how we can change this. 
So I wanted to find some terms uh, to make sure that we get started off. Because, hey, Brent, what is modern business communication? I'm glad you asked, sir, right there in the front. Uh, so I'm going to define some terms here. Uh, first one is contextual. And by definition, of relating to or depending on the context. Does anybody see a problem with this definition? Don't you just love a definition that uses part of the word in the definition? I do, too. Uh, OK, so let's define context. What do I mean by context? Context is the set of circumstances or facts that surround a particular event or situation. OK, so by contextual, we're talking about all of the things when we relate it to communication. We're talking about all of the things related to the conversation we're about to have. So what is the context that is lost, right? So we're in the app, we're looking at an airline reservation. We're, we're in the app, we're looking at uh, a product that we ordered and we can't figure out why it didn't ship yet, so we need to talk to somebody. So it's Amazon, right? And we call Amazon, and now the first thing they ask is, who are you, uh, what's, you know, what's the order number? All of these things that were already readily available inside of the app that you were using are not available to the first person you talk to on the phone. And that slows things down a lot, because now I have to re-go through the process of finding that information again. So that's context. That's the context we're talking about. Who you are, what it was you were trying to do, and why you made the call in the first place. It would be great if that followed into the, into the conversation in the first place. The second term that I want to define is streamlined. Now, you might imagine with a word as sophisticated looking as streamlined, it has a lot of definitions. And the first one that I found doesn't really fit what we're talking about here. We're not talking about air and water. Uh, so let's, let's get rid of that one. Designed or organized to give maximum efficiency or compact. This is, this is what we're talking about. And in fact, we can go one definition further. Uh, modernized and up to date. So this is, let's combine those two. This is a modernized or up to date process that has been designed or optimized to give maximum efficiency. A lot of the streamlining uh, in communication is going to come from having the context, right? So these two I see as intertwined. Uh, imagine how much faster that conversation goes with Amazon if the account number, the order number, who I am, and all of that stuff, where it was shipped to, what uh, methodology it was shipped via, what the tracking number is. What if the person that I was talking to already knew all of that information. That is going to streamline that conversation. All you have to do is say, hello, can you help me? And they can say, yes, I see this order de detail here. Let's see what's going on with that. You're going to take a five-minute conversation and turn it into a one-minute conversation. That gets you moving on, and it saves the company money, too, which is a, a big thing to talk about here. So that's streamlined. Medium of choice, I think, is the, is the one that we're missing the most right now. So to define medium of choice, this is my definition. This is to allow the user to use the method of communication that they prefer. So this is not just the method of communication, but also the device that they prefer. So do they want to accomplish this in a web browser? Do they want to accomplish this in a native application? Do they want to, for example, use SMS? Would they prefer to use voice or voice over IP? Sometimes people do want to do that. Perhaps they want to use chat, something like even Facebook Messenger or those other uh, over-the-top chat providers. Or perhaps they want to use video because they would really like to see the facial expression of the person on the other side. This brings another personal touch to the process. Uh, but here, what we're talking about is allowing the user to use their medium of choice to have communication. This is going to make them a happier user, happier customer. And ultimately, I think in 2016, we should all be tuned in to the fact that things should be secure. So with security, what we're talking about here is free, for, free from or not exposed to danger or harm. It's safe. The user will feel safe. Now, when we have conversations with things like our bank, for instance, uh, do you feel super safe about reading out your account number over the phone? Uh, in this day and age of who knows who's listening to whatever we're doing. I personally don't, uh, and, and that bothers me. So I don't know that I necessarily feel cool with that, right? Again, if we come back to context, why do I have to read out my account number in the first place? Wouldn't it be great if they already knew it? It saves me from having to, to talk about that. So let's talk about some examples. 
Uh, fingerprint verification. I'm going to show you an example of how this can be used. So a lot of phones these days are shipping with fingerprint readers. Uh, and they can be used to verify your identity on device. And I think that's really awesome. It's definitely a way to boost security. And I'll, I will show you a demo later of, of that in action. Uh, pretty soon, actually. We'll get to the demos. Uh, encrypt whenever possible. So if it is possible to encrypt the methodology of communication that you are using to talk to the customer, um, use encryption. That will certainly help. And ultimately, I think the biggest one is to leverage context to reduce the amount of sensitive information that even gets shared uh, in the first place, right? So if I don't have to read out what's going on, I, um, I, I obviously don't feel like there's a security risk because there's less information being shared from the get-go. So to, to re-go back and take a look at what the bullets were, uh, they are contextual, so that's bringing as much information uh, into the conversation as possible from the start. Streamlined uh, comes tightly coupled from contextual. Uh, the, the conversation should be as compact as possible and modern and up-to-date as possible. Medium of choice, allow the person to use SMS, voice, chat, video, whatever it is that they want to use to have the conversation and keep it secure. So cool, that's a lot of talk about theory and, and how it might work. Let's look at some practical examples. I'm going to show you what I consider a bad example of this being done. I'm going to show you a slightly better version of this being done. And then I'm going to show you a prototype uh, that might give you some ideas about how you can do this in your apps, uh, even if you're not an airline. I, I think this is applicable to customer service across the board uh, and business communication as a whole. And hopefully, someone will be inspired to help, uh, help change this in the future. Oops. Wrong key. Uh, okay, so the first airline that I want to take a look at here uh, is Southwest. So I have the Southwest app pulled up on my phone. I have the website pulled up uh, in the browser uh, just for comparison. Um, I have a flight coming up, obviously, going back from Orlando. I do fly Southwest, so I, I feel slightly bad about using them as an example. Um, but I look here in my flight, and there's no way to contact a person from here. I really need to talk to a person because I would feel more comfortable, in this case, changing the flight. This, you know, a lot of people would say, well, can't you just do that in the app? Uh, not everybody wants to do it in the app. Some people would like to talk to a person at this point to make sure that they don't make a mistake in changing their itinerary. So we go to the hamburger button, and we see a big list of things. And I think for the person that actually wants to make this phone call, they might be lost at this point, unfortunately. It would be great if that had been in line, right? Contact us if you have a problem. Uh, we drill down, and we get to contact us. And they got a nice big button that says 1-800-I-Fly-Southwest-Airlines. OK, cool. I'm going to imagine that that is probably what I want to call. So I'm going to tap that big button, and we're going to call Southwest. God willing. There we go. Thank you for calling Southwest Airlines. Your call may be recorded and monitored for quality purposes. That's fair. Lower fares may be available on southwest.com. Federal law that. prohibits the carriage of certain hazardous materials in your checked or carry-on baggage and could result in a fine. Hazardous By continuing materials. this call, you acknowledge that you understand the hazardous materials restrictions and penalties. Agree to these For more rules. information, please visit www.southwest.com. If you have questions regarding your rapid rewards account or if you're an English point. member, press 1. To make a new reservation or pay for an existing reservation, press 2. Okay, press 2. 36 to make seconds changes, there. For travel within the U.S. and Puerto Rico, press 1. For international travel, press okay. 2. Okay. means we treat you with fairness. On Immediately to hold music. No estimation of time. I don't know how long it's going to take. But let's, let's roll back. Let's go back to the beginning of what happened there. Um, the first problem I have is 36 seconds before I get to the actual one that's going to take me to the hold music is a long time. And that, that costs them money off the top. Um, the first thing that they said, though, the first part of the recording, does anybody remember what the first thing I said to remember was? Yeah, fares might be cheaper on southwest.com. Fares, it almost says fares will be cheaper on southwest.com. The first thing they say when you call them up is, don't call us. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I wanted to have a phone conversation, right? Like, that, that's kind of rude. Um, and then the second thing was this big, long disclaimer 
about the hazardous materials policy when you fly. They don't even know if I'm calling, like, I, I know it's an airline, but like, what if I'm not calling about a flight? Why am I agreeing to all these terms, right? I think it's reasonable to make someone agree to that at some point, but it's probably after the point when I'm, I've declared that I'm purchasing a ticket from you. Uh, it's just a weird, it's a weird way to welcome that conversation. I don't feel very welcome calling Southwest. Uh, and another problem is, as you can probably tell, there's no context going on, right? I, I had to declare my intent, right? What do you want to do? I had to press two. Why was it number two? Number two was book a flight or change an existing reservation. Number one was uh, rapid rewards, right? So they're prioritizing frequent flyer, their product frequent flyer over the customer's actual action. Like, there's a lot of things wrong, I think, in the, the Southwest flow here, right? I think we can all probably agree on that. The things that are ultimately missing, right, is I've done, they've done nothing to associate me to this conversation. So eventually, I'm gonna have to tell them who I am, what my rapid rewards account number is, what the flight is that I'm trying to look up. And these are all things that I'm going to have to have written down because I've also switched out of the Southwest app to make this phone call, right? So there's a lot of problems with this. So that's, that's the, that's the bad way to do this. Uh, let's do a slight improvement. Oh, session timeout, that's cute. Uh, let's switch to, we don't really need the website. Um, we are going to united.com now. Uh, let's switch to the, to the United example. So United, I used to fly United, so they're being nice, they're welcoming me back, and that's, that's very nice of them. Uh, I, I feel comfortable, right? But I don't have a flight to change in this case, so I can't go into an itinerary because I don't fly with them right now. By the way, this parallax effect, utterly useless. You see the plane moving around. Uh, watch, I'll do it again, for those of you that didn't see it the first time. Right, what? I don't know. They liked that API when it came out, I guess. Uh, it's fine. So uh, same scenario, I wanna talk to a human. I, I wanna get a human on the phone. Uh, so how do I do that? Oh, again, where do I go? The hamburger button. Uh, cool. Uh, we scroll down, and uh, it's a lot farther down this time because they've got a lot of things they wanna sell you, uh, and that's fine. But we go to contact us. Now, I got a problem with this design, right, compared to the other one. I don't know that these are tappable. They don't actually look tappable at all. Uh, but that's okay. I assure you that you can tap on this top one, and it will call United. Let's call United and see what happens. Thanks for calling United Airlines. Thank you. I looked up the number you're calling from and found an account. Am I speaking with Brent? Yes. Okay. Thanks. I see you've called us several times. Sorry, please say either yes or no. I see you've called us several times using phone number 484-560-2. All right, all right, all right, all right. I don't need you to know my entire phone number. Uh, but, but there's two things, that, there's like three things that happen there that are great. Thank you for calling. Ah, right? I mean, they, they actually welcomed me into the conversation as opposed to, hey, go to the website. Uh, and then they recognized that my phone number was linked to the account. Uh, so I see, that you've, I see that you've called from a phone number in our system. Is this Brent? Context. Uh, yes, yes. Um, and it's a voice conversation. I don't know, the voice thing didn't quite work there uh, very well. But uh, it's friendly, but it's carrying some context over. And then they went one step further. Uh, they said, I see that you've called from this number multiple times. Would you like to link this number to your account so that we can streamline this in the future? Right, so they've established our first two points, which is they carried some context over. Now that they know who I am, they know my account number, I'm pretty sure if I go say change an existing reservation, they're gonna pull up the list and ask me which reservation would you like to change? I see you have an upcoming flight. These types of things, right? So they've streamlined the conversation to this point. Um, and again, that's gonna hit security later down the road because I'm not gonna have to share as much information with them. It's already there. Uh, medium of choice. Perhaps, I mean, I'm able to do this over the phone and it feels a little nicer. Um, <clears throat> there is still one bit of context that we, we have definitely lost, though. Um, thankfully, they're picking up some of that loss of context by establishing most of it by identifying who I am, but we have once again left the app. So if there's any uh, question they have about anything that I would need to look up on united.com or within the United app, I'm now in the phone app, so we've, we've chucked out of our current context and moved into the phone app. 
Uh, and depending on who's using the, the phone and the apps at this point, that might be a problem. Uh, we don't know for sure. Now, I want to talk to you about uh, another airline. Uh, and that airline is called, oops, I had it queued up, sorry. Uh, that airline is called Owl Air. Now, Owl Air is a fictitious airline that looks a little bit like um, American, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna sign in with my Twitter account, which by the way is at Brent Schooley in case you wanna follow me. Uh, so I'm gonna sign in with that. And then I'm gonna co come over here and I'm gonna pull up uh, the agent interface uh, in my browser. And I'm going to connect my prototype. Uh, and what you're seeing over on the right, uh, again, this is fictitious, of course, but uh, you're seeing a potential airline scenario for this same problem that we're facing. Uh, I've got a list of my upcoming flights, and I want to, uh, I want to make a change. I, and, and I want to make a change to this uh, Dallas to Las Vegas flight coming up on uh, April 27th because, A, I'm not in Dallas, but it's fictitious. Go, roll with me here. Uh, I need to make a change because I'm not going to be able to fly on that day. So what are you noticing here? Uh, all the information is here. I got my check-in button, but then there's this new talk to agent button that is in line with the card that I'm looking at. So context, right? I'm going to be able to, I think I'm going to be able to make this happen right here. So when I tap talk to an agent, I get a little pop-up from the bottom that says, which of these options do you want? Oh, I want to change the flight. So I'm going to tap that. And what you're going to see happen over in the web browser is an incoming call. Brent Schooley is calling to change a flight. Here's his account number. Here's his phone number. Uh, and when I connect that, share selected devices, sure. I'll mute over here. Uh, this is an actual voice over IP call that's getting established uh, that is going to link me to an agent at Owl Air. And if you'll notice, all of the context has carried over to the agent interface. The agent has pretty much everything that I can see. The entire card, uh, what the travel dates are, uh, what, the, uh, what the situation was. They, they know that I called to change the flight. You can see it right up at the top. That's the context. Everything about my profile is in there. It's all, of course, fake data. That's not, I wasn't born in 1956, I hope. Uh, I would look pretty good if I was. Uh, but anyways, all of that information is there. Uh, I noticed that the call did not connect. Let's see, this should still work though. If I hit change, no, we gotta establish the call. Let's, uh, let's try this again. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna kill the app and come back in because I think what happened was I, I had it running in the background and uh, that doesn't work too well. The log out, log in guy. Uh, all right, so let's sign back in. And try that again. Talk to an agent, change the flight, get the pop-up, connect the call, select the microphone, connect the call. Connect the call. There we go. We're talking to Karen Fitzgerald. All right, so this is an actual um, live, uh, live voice over IP call. You can see the tickers. This is a real voice over IP call. Um, I am actually talking to uh, the, the web browser here, so I'm talking to myself. But you can imagine I'm talking to Karen Fitzgerald. Uh, she comes in here and says, okay, I see that you're uh, wanting to change this flight. Uh, let me look up some details. Let me try to find a flight for you on the 29th. Uh, and she hits search for flights. She finds a few flights on uh, the 29th that are available. She picks one. Uh, and she takes a look at the details just to make sure. Uh, and then it asks if she wants to send the card to Brent Schooley. She says confirm and send. And it pops down uh, in, in device. So I'm in a voice over IP call with her. She finds a record that works for me, uh, sends it down, and asks, hey, uh, would this work for you? And I'm like, sure. Yeah, that gives me, that gives me um, a, a couple of extra days to uh, decide whether I want to do this or not. Uh, and I hit confirm. Touch ID. So are we sure that this is Brent that's actually using the application? Well, let's find out. Yes, it is. My flight's been updated. Card goes away. She gets a confirmation that I verified it with Touch ID so she can finish things on her end knowing that it's secure. And then she gets prompted to ask a nice, polite question. Is there anything else I can help you with? 
So this is a much more streamlined process. Can we all agree this is a much more streamlined process? I wish my airline had this. Like, that would be great. Uh, the beauty of this kind of thing is we have the technology to do this right now. Let's end the call with Gary. We have the technology to do this today. All we're missing is some savvy developers, some savvy business, idea, business people getting these ideas into the companies. And we can show them how this works by building other scenarios, by building these apps and showing people that this can be done in a better way. It's 2016. We don't need to use like 1980s, 1990s communication strategies. We can do stuff like this. We could have done this with chat. So I was talking about Medium, right? We could do this with chat. So we could allow the person to solve this problem in line with chat. We could do video instead of the voice over IP call. The, me the method, the medium, that sort of thing, uh, it's not as important um, as just simply uh, providing the choice. I'm going to swap clickers real quick. Uh, just providing that, that choice, giving the person some options. Uh, close that. OK, cool. So we like this demo. We want to we build stuff like that. I think this is where we have power as software developers. We can literally change the future of how communication is done by building stuff like this. Now, that's not the last bit that I have to talk about, but let's roll back and just talk about what we saw. So in the Owl Air example, uh, contextual, what are the specific bits that made it contextual? Well, we didn't leave the app, right? We were able to make the call in line. That's the first important thing. Because we didn't leave the app, we never left the information that was important to us, which was the flight that we were trying to change. Uh, our account information, everything about our account, uh, all of that context, including not just the, uh, about our account, but what we were trying to do, which was change a flight, and which flight we were trying to change, and all of the details about it, all transferred over to the agent when the call was connected. So that's super powerful. Uh, the agent has all of the context that we had. We're starting the conversation at the same page, which made it a streamlined conversation because we didn't have to do that whole dance about, well, A, I didn't have to go through an IVR. I was connected directly to an agent. Uh, I didn't have to press one, then press two, then enter my account information. Um, I was just connected directly to an agent. Uh, and that agent had all of the information already, so she didn't have to ask me a whole bunch of questions. Uh, so we had a, a much more streamlined conversation than we would have otherwise. Uh, and it was done in the medium of my choice, so I wanted to make a voice call and I wanted to stay in the app, and I was given that option in this case. And we saw the, the touch ID aspect being used to help secure the conversation. So there's two bits of security. One, we didn't have to share any sensitive information to make the conversation happen, to happen in the first place. No account numbers, no addresses, none of that had to be shared over the voice medium. Uh, and then we used touch ID uh, to finish the process. So that's all four of those points uh, being hit in one sample. Make sense? We, we cool on those four? All right. Uh, with a bit of the rest of the time, I wanted to talk about something completely different. But not completely. Not completely different. 2016 is the year of blank. Anybody want to take a guess at what it is? Bots? He says bots. Uh, anybody else want to hazard a guess? I think it's the year of desktop Linux. <laughs> I mean, they've been trying to make this happen for so long. 2016 is the year of Linux on the desktop. You heard it here first. Probably not here first. No, it's the year of the chatbot. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. I owe you a Twilio t-shirt, which you can pick up at the Twilio booth. Uh, yes, 2016 is the year of the chatbot. Uh, all you have to do is ask Microsoft or ask Facebook. Or uh, how many people, OK, let's, let's do a show of hands things. How many people are in at least one Slack network? OK, uh, two, three, four, five, six, five. OK, five, five was the, oh, six, six, seven, eight, seven. Ten. OK, ten. Ten is, ten is the record in the room. OK, so we have ten, ten Slack networks. And I'm sure there's plenty of bots in there. There's one that ships with the product. There's a ton that people have built. This is a big thing. Um, and they're, they're starting to roll into other areas, like Skype and Facebook Messenger and, I'm sure, WhatsApp. And pretty much every platform is going to have these bots soon. If you're not 
tuned in. Uh, here's what Microsoft's uh, situation looks like. So there's your bot's web service, so something in the cloud, which is great, because um, Twilio's in the cloud. Like, cloud is great. So there's a bot sitting up there, uh, and the bot connector manages some other things for you. So this is what routes the messages, manages the state, uh, does bot registration. They've got a directory of bots. Uh, there's a bunch of services. There's SDKs. There's storage for the bots. This is a very powerful platform. So you build your bot, and then the bot connector connects that bot's logic up to all of these other channels. So you can do things like email. Maybe you want to drive a, a bot-driven uh, communication through email. Uh, GroupMe, Skype, Slack, like I said, WhatsApp, all of these things are probably going to come soon. Uh, and then SMS, so maybe you want your bot to work via text message, powered by Twilio. Uh, it is. You'll see when you set up your bot, if you go to the SMS channel, uh, you'll have to set up a Twilio account. It's pretty awesome, though. Uh, your bot can work via text message. Um, and then Telegram, web, there's Twitter coming if you look on the bots page. There's all kinds of things. These are going to be everywhere. Uh, and they're cool. So one of the examples that they showed on stage that I thought was pretty neat, perhaps not particularly practical, uh, was this Domino's pizza bot. So they made a bot that you could order pizza from like every possible imaginable way. Right? You could send a text message to order a pizza. You could use GroupMe to order a pizza. You could use Skype to order a pizza. And that would be cool in and of itself. Uh, but they, they went through like the nuances of what it means to order a pizza. And they used natural language processing to, to detect the sentence. So we got things like, can you deliver three large pepperoni pizzas to my crib? Uh, and they worked through like how the computer is going to have no clue what to my crib means, uh, but they end up uh, they, they end up working through this problem, and they, they apply a label to to my crib to say that that's a location, right? And the next step in the process would be, okay, I see a location to my crib. Can you give me more details about your crib? Uh, where where exactly is your crib? Uh, but they're they're parsing out like quantities and uh, the mechanism that they, they okay, it's for delivery, it's not for pickup. And pepperoni is a topping, right? So they're, they're defining rules for this bot. And I think that's, that's where the power starts to come in. That it's not just, everyone says, it, are, are bots the new command line? Like, well, yes and no. Uh, if you want them to just be the next command line, sure, they'll be the next command line. That's, that's awesome. We'll just send simple commands to these things all the time. Uh, I don't think that's where the power is. I think the power comes in when we make these things do powerful things that now don't require talking to a person. Right? We've talked about talking to a person. This is about not talking to a person, but doing it in a way that feels like a conversational flow. What's going on here uh, is that th through talking to Cortana in Skype, Cortana has ascertained that for an upcoming trip that I might need a hotel. Uh, so that's the question that's happening a little bit above the fold here. If you watch the build, uh, build keynotes, you'll see this. But happening just above the fold a little bit is that assessment that you might need to book something. And Cortana pulls in the Westin hotel bot. Like, all right, we've got two machines doing work for us. Cortana's figured out our intent, but has also looked at our past preferences and realized we book with Westin a lot and knows that the Westin bot exists and pulls the Westin bot into the Skype conversation and says, hey, uh, here's some options similar to rooms that you've booked before. Context. Uh, and then ask the questions, hey, should I reserve this for you? Uh, and then it says, all right, Cortana's got everything we need here. Uh, and you can imagine Cortana and the Weston bot uh, going off and having a conversation together uh, about what you would like to book, and they'll book it for you. You've ever heard someone say, my people will get back to your people? Your people are now machines, right? Like, your people can actually do this for you. You have people, and they are bots. Uh, and that's pretty cool. So I was supposed to zoom in on that, but there you can see it. For those of you that were taking the pictures, you get a, get a nicer one with it zoomed in. So I wanted to show you what the, the bot framework looks like, because I think it's really cool. I don't necessarily know that it, like 2016 is the year of the bot. I think we're going to see a lot of these things. Maybe we're not going to see them fully realized until 2017, 2018, as they get even smarter. But I think this is the year that we can start thinking about how these things might enhance uh, our lives and enhance the communication that we have with companies. So I'm going to drop into uh, Visual Studio. 
and we're gonna do something really simple with our bot. Uh, and I've got a couple things already pre-done pre here. We are going to use the Twilio lookup service. So this is uh, twilio.com slash lookup if you're curious. But what, uh, what lookup allows you to do is take a phone number uh, and send it just with a really simple rest call uh, to Twilio, and it'll give you all the information about that phone number, like everything. What the carrier is, what the country is, uh, whether it's a landline or a mobile phone, uh, all of that. You get a ton of information back from this. Uh, and we're gonna use that. We're gonna make this simple call. We've got a little service that's gonna take a phone number that's typed in, it's gonna run it through Twilio Lookup, and it's gonna bounce that back to us with some results, and then we're gonna use it in the bot. Uh, so if I go over to the messages controller, the thing that we're gonna spin up, so we're gonna create a number lookup, uh, and we're gonna use that Twilio Lookup service uh, passing in, uh, so this message, let's, let's talk about what this is. So we're, we're in a post method uh, inside of a bot. Basically, this is a, um, an API controller, so we're just using standard API controller out of ASP.NET, but everything is annotated uh, with this bot authentication uh, so that uh, the bot it authenticates correctly with your um, API key and secrets. Uh, but basically, this is the post method inside of this API. Uh, and it's passing in a parameter, which is the message. And the message in this case is whatever was typed into the bot. So you can presume in our bot, if it's being done correctly, we're not gonna do any error checking, but uh, we're gonna get a properly formed phone number uh, typed in at, from, from the bot. And, and what we could do uh, in the future if we wanted to iterate on this was check to see if it was a valid phone number that was input uh, format-wise. And if it wasn't, we could respond and say, hey, try again, this, this won't work. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll take sane input for this one. But we get the message in, and we wanna just grab the text uh, out of that message, right? So we're gonna pass, uh, this is going to be dot get number info, uh, and we're gonna pass in the message text. So whatever was typed into the bot, we're gonna pass that into our lookup service, which we just saw is gonna return back a number lookup uh, object with a bunch of stuff in it. So that's cool. Uh, and then the next one has a whole bunch of text that you don't wanna watch me type, so I'm going to snippet that one. Uh, but we're basically just gonna build a response. And when you're building these bots, it uses markdown, so this uses standard markdown syntax. We've got some things that are bolded. It's just gonna help format the, the response. But we're pulling the national format uh, of the phone number, uh, and then we're doing uh, carrier lookup, country code, and carrier type. So this is gonna give us, for this number, here's the carrier, here's the country code, uh, and here's the type of landline, or landline or mobile, so the type of phone that it actually is. Uh, and then all we need to do with that, so we've built up a string, uh, all we gotta do is pass the string back to the bot. So we return, uh, we use the message, uh, message object that came in, uh, and we do create reply message, and we pass in the string uh, that we wanna respond with. It's pretty simple, right? So like, this is where your, your logic goes for responding to a bot command. Uh, you'll notice it says if message.type equals message, uh, there's a couple of different things you can do here. Um, message type uh, message is a, a message sent to the bot. Everything else is a system command. So the else block actually says, hey, process anything else that might have come in as a system command. And there's a bunch of those. There's ping, uh, delete user data, bot joined a conversation, bot removed from a uh, conversation. So there's a whole bunch of different things you can do uh, with the results of that. Now, I've already, uh, taken a few steps past this point. What you would do here uh, is build it locally, and it'll run on localhost at a certain port, and you uh, pull up the bot emulator, which you can also install. Uh, and then the bot emulator would be, by default, uh, configured to look at the localhost instance uh, on the correct port, and you don't have to configure anything else. You can just start testing it right away. You just run it from Visual Studio and start typing commands into the uh, bot emulator. Now I went an extra step further uh, and deployed this uh, up to the, uh, the bot, bot registry. So here's the, the, the bot running. Uh, it's in the directory. I've got it deployed out to Azure. Uh, so that's the actual, actual, actual bot uh, having been deployed. And I pulled in the uh, URL that that exposes for this bot here. I figured uh, so that we don't share any sensitive information here, I wouldn't ask anybody for a phone number. I would just look up 
uh, Universal Studios. Anybody excited about that party tonight? It's going to be cool. Uh, we basically get Universal Studios to ourselves because I don't know if you know, but Universal Studios closes at 7. We go there at 8. Uh, so that's going to be fun. That's going to be fun. Uh, let's copy that phone number and let's go over to our bot framework uh, and let's punch in that number into the bot and run it. The command will go out. We'll get a, hopefully we'll get a result. Uh, back from the from the bot was well, having some trouble. We can run it locally if it doesn't. There it goes. All right. So we see that they uh, the Universal is using Bell South. Uh, they're in the U.S. and it's a landline. That all makes perfect sense. Um, I'm not going to punch any. I guess I could do. Let's see. I had a five one two eight one seven one three three seven. Uh, oops, wrong key. We'll do uh, plus one in the front of that to do the uh, standard, standard notation for the phone number. And I punched that one in. That's actually a Twilio number. And those show up as VoIP numbers because we do some fun magic uh, to talk to the carriers with that. But you could, you could punch any phone number, any valid phone number, into here, and it will return all the details for that phone number. Does that make sense? Cool. All right. That is the bot framework that is, I think, a lot of fun that you can play with. Uh, let's go back to slides real quick. And just to review uh, the types of things that we were talking about, we have context, right? Context is key. It is very, very, very important to building a streamlined communication. Uh, conversations with people that are done in a contextual manner are streamlined by nature. If they're done on the medium of choice, the user doesn't leave the comfort zone of whatever it is uh, that they were currently working on. And if we do things right, things will be secure. Are we cool on those four points? I think there are only four points. There are probably many, many more things that we could explore as attributes of this uh, modern business communication. And I'd be happy to talk to you about those in the Q&A. I would love to hear what your ideas are. Uh, but these are the four that I defined, and we saw them in action with Al Air. Uh, and then we talked about bots, where I think it's just a playground, right? And there's ways that we can create conversations with machines that people haven't had yet. And I think that's going to be an amazing thing. I, I think it's gimmicky right now, but I think as we use things like cognitive services and do natural language processing, and we see this get more and more sophisticated and easier to build, I think this is really going to change how, how we communicate. And it's going to be great. So I said tech evolves at a rapid pace. That was the stage that we set. Let's harness that power and speed as software developers. Software developers have the power, right, to do whatever they want to change the world. I mean that, all of you. Let's change the future of communication collectively. Does anybody have any questions? No, no questions? Okay, so the, the question was, uh, if in the airline example we're using a VoIP call, uh, what happens when a call comes in? Does it abruptly cut off uh, the call that's being had? Um, I think ultimately that's going to depend on the phone OS uh, in terms of like whether that's going to be a deal breaker or not. There are probably things you can do in app to sort of squelch that on certain platforms. I'm sure you can do it on Android, not really sure anywhere else. I don't think it's going to end the call abruptly. Uh, you are going to get that. You are going to get that blip in audio uh, when the notification comes in, but it shouldn't disconnect the the VoIP call. Sorry, what was that? Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Yes. Yeah, so the question was about the natural language processing. I haven't played a lot with it yet in terms of like the response flow. 
Um, we've just kind of started digging into it because, as I mentioned up front, we have a chat SDK. So we're kind of exploring how do we bring bots into our chat SDK uh, as well. So I haven't played with it too much. Uh, I, think the, I think the Domino's bot example, like what they were showing there, those tools exist. Like you can, you can go get them and, and play with that. Uh, but I don't know the exact workflow uh, around making it happen. I would, I would definitely check out that, the, that section of the build keynote if you haven't seen it and you're interested in how those should work. It was, I think it was really well done. Yes? Okay, cool. That helps. Uh, in your example, okay. in your example with the uh, airline, I kind of looked at it at, from our company's point of view, and we use Salesforce to track everything. Yeah. So I, I have that same frustration with the airlines. I've talked, you know, I've had that same complaint for a long, long time. But where, how do you see this? going into a, a large scale company and saying, okay, you have all these stovepipe legacy systems that they don't want to, they're committed to keeping them for the time being and building something like this on top of it. Is that, is that what you're proposing? Uh, yes and no. So I think what's interesting about changing, and, and I mean like literally changing the future of communication, yes, there are old legacy systems. Uh, Home Depot, I'll give you an example of a, a large company with a lot of infrastructure. Home Depot uh, replaced a ton of legacy hardware, costing them a lot of money, uh, and it was their global call center. The frustration came from, this isn't the right experience, this is costing us a lot of money, and to change the experience, it's gonna take us months, months and months and months and months and months to make a change to this system, when if we spun up some developers, uh, and built this with Twilio as a cloud provider, uh, we could iterate on that change in weeks, get it through QA, and ship it in a fraction of the time. Uh, I think it really does come down to making the strong case that yes, you do have all of these systems, but are they the right solution, right? Are they the right solution? And, and in this case, it saved them money because they don't have the hardware maintenance. It improved the experience because they're able to uh, rapidly iterate on new features to add and fix bugs, honestly, also, uh, in their call center software. But then, you know, down the road, they don't have all that hardware to maintain, replace, and that sort of thing. Um, no, they built it. I mean, uh, they had, they use our service. I'm, I'm sure we had, you know, some support. We, we always have support on hand for anybody. Uh, you start using Twilio, we'll help you. But yeah, they, they had a team of engineers uh, that replaced that. Yeah, so that's, that's one, yeah, the, the question about, you know, did we help, did we help them uh, build their business case? Yeah, so we do, we do have sales reps that are out trying to push. We're, we're trying to push this Al Air thing into the airlines. We're, we're beating on all the doors that we can to get the first airline to do this, because once one does it, everybody else is going to look silly. Um, and that's, and that's kind of the, the approach that you have to take is uh, make it happen somewhere. Show the world what can be done and everybody else will fall in line if it's a good idea. And, and I think that's, that's what we have the power to do. We can prototype these things, we can build these things and show how they would work, and, and really try to make inroads to, to changing these things down the road, I think. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, uh, let's go back, let's go back. Why are they saying no? I don't know, it makes me sad, man. <laughs> um, so like, I think, I think the business case has to be built, and it has to be built in, in such a way that they understand that yes, it's gonna cost time and effort to replace this, uh, whatever they have currently, whatever they've built up. But there's a reason why Southwest doesn't want you to stay on the phone. It's costing them money. As soon as you get two minutes into that call and you actually get connected to a human being, they're having to employ that person to now have that five to 10 minute conversation that could have been one minute, right? Like, you gotta make, you gotta make the right case. It seems like, um, you know, we're getting close, but uh, it's tough, it's tough, because you've got, you've got people that made those decisions before, right, and they have to be shown, this is probably a better way to do it, and it's ultimately, it's gonna save us money. Like, that, I think that's the, that's the kicker, is ultimately, is the work that we need to do to make that happen 
uh, is that going to return an investment later by saving us money down the road? It probably will, and, and I, think we'll, I think we'll get there eventually. Gentleman up front, have one. Uh, first of all, I, I love the, uh, the Allaire example. Um, I'm in health insurance, um, and you know, we have a very large call center, a lot of people uh, call in for questions about their claims and, what's, and so, so forth. Um, but that was a kind of a, I don't want to say unrealistic, but it's kind of in a bubble scenario, I guess. In a real world scenario, if we started a phone call, for example, if a person had a question about a claim or a flight in this example, they would go into a queue. And then right sure. now you're that voice over IP call is, uh, you know, data being used. Yes. Um, what, I guess, I guess maybe how much data per minute or for example, or what do you guys do? Because now you're kind of shifting some of that burden of cost, I guess, back to the user using voice over IP, I guess, instead of using minutes if in a traditional phone call, I guess. So sure. How does, I guess, what are your thoughts about all that stuff? I, I suppose, I suppose there's a couple, there's a couple ways to do this. Well, one, I think, I think as we move forward, data is going to be, it's, it's expensive right now, but like you can imagine that gets cheaper over time. Uh, this isn't going to happen tomorrow for, for starters. Um, I think, I think in terms of like, you know, like I said, medium of choice, does, does voice, does a voice call work better for you? Um, the United example is a lot closer to the, to the right thing, I think, if voice is what you're going to do. Um, your question regarding, what was the first part? Just more worried about, you know, you know, if the person's on the phone and they hit the button to call to help and voice over IP calls. Yeah. So, so I think the Q, I think the Q thing is a reality. Um, I will say, not to prop up another product, uh, we've implemented the logic for that already. So we have a product called Task Router that does intelligent task routing for call centers like this. Um, so on that side, don't have to reinvent the wheel to, to write that logic. I guess to your point though, on the user side, what I do like about this scenario is we can detect how long it's probably going to take based on historical averages. And instead of them calling up and then getting chucked to hold music where they really don't know when that's going to be available, we can present in the app, we think this is going to take about 10 minutes. We'll send you a push notification when the agent's ready. Go on about your business. Go use your phone to do whatever else you want to do. As soon as that agent's ready, we give you a push notification. We take you right back into the app where you were, and we connect the VoIP call. So that, I, think that, I think that's even better, too. I think American. American Airlines, I've flown on a, different air, a lot of different airlines. Uh, I think American Airlines implemented at one point when the hold time is going to be too long, uh, they will ask you, hey, it looks like it's going to take about an hour. It's some, it was a snow situation, right? Uh, the call volume was too high. They're like, uh, can we call you back on this number when someone's available? Like, that's the right thing to do, too. And I, I haven't seen too many do that. Uh, but yeah, in our, in our app-driven scenario, we can totally do that with a push later when someone becomes available. And I think that helps again, right? Uh, yes. From experience, I can tell you the best, the best experience is always you call up and they say, yeah, we don't have anybody available. Can we call you back? Yeah. And that's, that's literally the whole experience. Uh, I know yeah. Two Cows does that for Ting, Hover, and basically oh, right, all their right, products. Right, right. You literally call them, they say, we can't talk to you right now, we'll call you back as soon as we can. They call you back within a day and it's Right, you really call, great. someone will answer. Yeah. Right. Um, I, I forgot one part in the contextual uh, side too, which is the most frustrating is when you call up, you establish that context by punching in your account number or telling them your account number and all of that. And then they're like, oh, I have to transfer you over to sales. And the call transfers over to sales and they don't do a warm transfer correctly, so they don't establish that context with the other person before they transfer over, and they don't stay on the line with them to make sure it happens. Uh, so you start from square one with sales, and then you get disconnected, <laughs> right, and then you get disconnected, and then you call back, and you get somebody completely different, because how are you supposed to remember the person's name and the department they were in? Like, that's not your job, that's their job. And it's, and it's all lost, and you start from square one two, three times. This is the most frustrating, I think, of all the scenarios, uh, is that one. We still have some time if anybody has anything else. Questions, comments. If not, um, enjoy the rest of Evolve. I think it's going to be great. Uh, and thank you for, for stopping by. Please, uh, please help change 
th this world of communication that we have. I think there's some people that have some great ideas. Go, go do them. Go help this happen. Uh, I'm Brent Schooley. I will be at the Twilio booth uh, pretty much the entire conference. I've got a couple sessions I want to see, but if you have any questions about any of this or anything you can or can't build on Twilio, uh, come find me. Uh, we've got some t-shirts. If you want one of those, they're great. They're nice and comfortable. Uh, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you.